say the steps very slowly and loudly so you can type it down because this is the most important step which you can use for any editing you do any type of photography any editing you do this hyper story so first of all when you open the image you keep the image canvas size intact the normal in normal cases like uh, when we take a shot from camera and if the image proportion is 3 to 4 what we see is in normal cases the image canvas size is 4000 pixel width and height is 6000 pixel first point don't change the canvas size keep it as it is number one number two when you open the image and do the editing in the first image when you open it always use the layer of higher copy option always keep copying the layer of your previous layer because this will allow you to see the changes you have done using any tool from photoshop Number three is when the first step of editing, you need to remove the blemishes from your subject. You do not have to change your subject face or the entire skin texture. Keep the skin texture intact because each and every human being has unique skin texture. So why changing? It's their own beauty. So keep the beauty intact. But just need to remove the blemishes since fashion photography, we always look for something perfect. So make it make things perfect, but don't change the skin texture. So for to, uh, you removing the blemishes, go to filter, then other, then high plus. I'm holding just as it is so you can note it down. Filter, then other, then high plus. Now, when I'm clicking on this hypers, let me tell you again, do not change the canvas size, 4000 by 6000 pixel. And when I'm clicking the hypers tool, while your image is in 4000 by 6000 pixel, try to give value, pixel value like 25, because in my past experience, I have seen that it is kind of perfect if your image is sharp, if you uh, take a shot like properly with the proper lighting setup, the value should be 20, 25, or 30 maybe. Okay, just to you will get this kind of output while doing the high pass. Okay, now the next step is after getting this effect, the next step is you have to change the blending mode, and the blending mode will be. Vivid light. I'm holding the screen right here so that everyone can look it down. The blending mode should be vivid light. Now, when I'm clicking on this vivid light, you can see the pores of the skin pigmentation is really prominent. I'm zooming, I'm zooming on the skin, you can see this pores is very prominent. Now, we need to remove this thing. So, the process is we need to inverse the image. You can either go to image to do inverse or uh, use the short key. I use a lot of short key as I have uh, tell you uh, before. So control I is the inverse key. So you need to inverse the image. Now you need to choose mask. You have selected mask with black color so you get the previous screen now you need to choose a paint brush tool brush tool i'm holding the mouse here so everyone can let it down i'm going to use the brush tool and the value can be different it will vary like uh, i'm going to use uh, this uh, tool on different portion of the screen so uh, as per the area, you need to choose the brush. Like for forehead, you can choose a bigger one, but for the detailing part, I'll suggest you to choose the smallest brush and do it very uh, minutely with a lot of time. Okay. So this is the step, and after doing this step, you will achieve something like this. 
I hope everyone has understood the step as of now. Now, the next step. While going to the next step, again, I'm going to layer back up. I'm going to copy the same layer because when I'm going to do the edit in this layer, I can really see the previous layer using switch on and off. Okay. So let me zoom in this image. I can see some blemishes. Okay. Now, if we move these blemishes, I will use clone tool. This is the tool that I'm going to use, clone style tool. And I'm going to use the small diameter because I do not intend to change the skin texture. This is how I'll take time and do changes on the screen to remove the process. Now, this process is very lengthy. As you can understand, like I do edit pixel by pixel. I do not change the entire skin. If you choose a bigger diameter, it will might you know uh, distort your screen or lot of, you will lose a lot of information. So I always suggest you to choose a smaller diameter so you can just remove the blemishes and nothing else. And this process will take a lot of time, but I do not want to make you feel bored doing all these things here. Uh, just you can understand, like, you know, you need to remove the blemishes. So I'm just trying to do it as fast as possible. But uh, one beauty shot image where it can take a long time, I do not have here. So I'm trying to do it in a short period of time. I just need to remove these blemishes. So not perfect. So, as a fashion photographer, our uh, tendency to be make our sub, uh, uh, subject as perfect as we can. Okay. 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 How do you want to do it? But uh, we are going to do the Dubai. You want to? Buy a, no, my question to you: Do you? Uh, someone from the mo someone from the moderator is on phone call. Could you please mute your computer or device? Okay. No. no what? What I'm asking is. I think he cannot. Suresh, I guess your colleague is on. Uh, Suresh or Sambit, could you please now speak to your colleague? Okay. Okay. Deji, I think he cannot. Yeah, please carry on. So, this is how I remove. Let me say in a short period of time. Yeah. We can bring payment to you from India itself. Hello, because I think you should you can ship to India. I can bring in, but only only once uh, one one just the other night. Yeah, please carry on. I think it's taken care. Perfect. And uh, just try to be a little louder. Actually, some people are finding it difficult. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Actually, my mic is going down while I, yeah. I have engaged. It's going on right now. Put on hold in a way so that you know because we have a webinar going on for Sigma lenses right now, and then we have uh, on one side. Then we have my accounts yeah. making. Grace, can you ask your colleague to be? OTP has to be shared by me, so a bit of interruptions going on. There. That's why, but no problem. 
um so no see uh, what what is what is important here is um supplier which is uh, seek thermal usa what is their comfort level for allowance of shipment okay meaning if, if supplier is willing to ship to buy suresh or sobit please take it or if supplier saying no we cannot ship to dubai we can only ship to india i think i have uh, i think avinash is there on the phone call yes Okay. Okay. No, it's very Dubai is very easy for us to handle. So okay. this is the uh, thing uh, like very easy for us to handle. Payment from Dubai is not a problem. Uh, uh, because you can uh, you can call out of Dubai direct to to India or to Singapore, whichever way they want to handle. It. They want to do it in the US. India means it has to be in a local currency. Yeah, if they make, if payment out of Dubai, I means they can make completely U.S. dollar currencies. But then the purchase from Seek Thermal, will they accept if our uh, logist our logistic company from Singapore makes Hello. payment? Will they accept that? See, we, because yeah. we have an agreement, we we have a uh, NDA everything between Chitra agencies. Don't have Hello. It with the company. So how will the government? Rajesh. Okay, fine. No, no, but you see, uh, uh, Ashutosh, client will be very simple, Ashutosh. It's not the client which is of concern to me. Client is very simple. I will make the payment to you. You issue the group. You give me the delivery in Dubai. That's all he'll ask you. Okay, he's got no issues with all that. What is critical is how you will be able to make supply based on who you will, who's, from who you will accept payment. Okay. See, that is can what you, is important. Can, if, but, can you please call him because payment from Chitra agency? Is, okay, then then I have to talk to them and uh, I, have, I have to factor in the exchange rates and things like that. Okay. Now, if you, it's all about the principle how you all look at. So, can I call you back in five minutes? Five ten minutes. I'll call yeah, Keshan, at least it's Keshan voice. Hello, Krish. Yeah. Oh, huh? Krish. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, so this portion, I have almost removed the blemishes from the entire uh, skin of the face and a uh, few portion of the body part. But this portion is very tricky. Normally, what I do is I remove layer by layer. Like the, well, I take a, a, each and every hair should be removed separately. But that will take a very long time. But since this... Uh, is a webinar and we have uh, limited time, so I'm going to use a bigger version of uh, uh, DOS2. But I won't uh, say that this is a perfect process, but still, we don't have that much of time to do hairline edit. So I'm going to use this one. When you see this picture in 100 percent view, uh, you won't be able to understand. That's for sure. But usually for this kind of a thing, I uh, try to remove each and every hair cell. And that will take a long time just to make sure, like for example, I use uh, this brush tool. And uh, I choose a very uh, sh short diameter and I do this to something like this. Each and every here should be removed separately. But here, uh, I'm going to remove the portion of this to 
make this process as fast as possible. This is how I have done it. Then, uh, in the 100% view, you can see a little uh, shadow, unnecessary things that we have so I need to do all this. So when you do any editing, you have to have a lot of patience and really peaceful mind to do a proper edit. So this is how I remove a little blemishes and uh, I think uh, this look from the previous layer. So I'm going to switch on and off again so you can see the difference. And the difference you can see here. I'm going to zoom more on the screen so you can see. So the, now the main part is uh, while we remove all the blemishes, just to give a proper feel in the picture, we need to change the color tone and all. So different picture deploy different type of color, and it is totally depending upon the portion of this editing the picture. Because since it is an art, so it varies portion to portion how the person is seeing into the beauty to your subject. So for this thing, for this image, what I personally feel is like uh, if I go for a cooler tone, this image look much better. Some people may differ from me, but here, uh, since I'm editing this thing, so I'm going to use the cooler tone for this picture. So, Again, I'm going to use the layer by copy just like before, and I'm going to choose the photo filter. For any cooler tone, these are the default value which is there in Photoshop. I'm going to use this blue tone because blue will make things very cooler. There are a lot of other cooler filters here, but I'm not going to use it because these are not perfect here. And this blue tone, which will keep the skin uh, texture, skin tone, uh, you know, proper. Uh, doesn't look more artificial, and it will also give a nice feel to the picture. So I'm going to use blue. The default value is 25, so I'll use it as, as it is. So you can see the difference. After this stone, I'm going to use uh, contrast and brightness to just to make sure that my picture is looking you know perfect from brightness contrast point of view. So I think a uh, little contrast. Abir, Abir, can you use, can you try without your earphone? Because your earphones are away again and again. Because my hands are going in the Photoshop, right? So, it is right. Like, so is there any solution do you have? 
Um, just can, you hear, can you hear now? It is better, but after some time it goes, uh, voice goes down. Okay. I have laptop, but, uh, you know, laptop speaker is there, but if I remove this earphone, you will get a lot of noise. Hello. Okay. Yeah, please continue. Okay. So, I'm going to adjust the contrast. You can see the difference. Yeah. Now, there is more important thing to do. This part is not enough. We have a lot of things. First thing is face. Since it is a beauty shop, we really need to make the uh, different section of the face perfect. For example, eyes, lips, this needs to really pop out. For this thing, I'm going to use this too. I'm going to bear her copy again. I'm going to use this dodge tool. This is very effective. Dodge tool. What I'm going to use this dodge tool for? I'm going to pop out the eye and lip edges. I'm going to repeat again. I'm going to pop out the eye and lip edges. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. You really need to zoom while you do this kind of thing. You can see this white portion. You need to brush it. You have to have a steady hand to do it. And it's all about practice. I'm sure, like, uh, if you practice regularly, your image editing skill will be very perfect. And when you do the eye retouching, you have to make sure that the uh, two eyes look similar. You can see the difference. Now I'm going on the lip part. See, I have not done anything with the texture. I keep the texture as it is. You can see the lip cracks are also. I have not edited that. A lot of people do a lot of mistakes here. Because they uh, thought that, you know, if I remove this crack, my image will look smooth, that will look perfect. No, it's not like that. Keep the texture on because that is the beauty of human body. So don't, uh, don't want to mess around with your texture. And do not over use any tool, just use however you want to, and do not over use.
to see the difference. This is the previous one, and after I use uh, the dots to Now, there is another thing, sharpen the image. Now, what we do with hypers tool in the beginning of the editing, we use the hypers tool at the beginning of the editing just to remove the unnecessary frequency from the image, the blemishes and all this work. But at the end of editing, I'm going to use again the hypers tool just to sharpen our there is another process hypers. We can use this tool to sharp our image. Now, how am I going to do it? I'm going to again uh, layer that copy. I'm going to use this hypers tool. Now the value will be different. The value will be one. Why? Because I do not want to uh, make the image look very sharp so it becomes pixelated. So I have reduced the value to one. I will use this edit to edit light then uh, color. You see the image looks more sharper. This pixel is sharp. This pixel is very really sharp. I do not this image. If you want the image to look more sharp, you can use this one. It's not sharp. But use the smallest value. This will take you use to the more sharp level. Okay, so this is the image, and uh, you can see the output here the previous image and the final image. So, basically, I'm going to quickly uh, recap the enter uh, uh, steps again. So you all can remember because this is very useful for any edit of yours, any type of photography. When you have a new image, always use this layer by copy before using any new tool for any layer. Always keep copying layer because you can see the difference from one another. And before editing, you choose this tool, uh, uh, filter, and other hypers for 4000 by 6000. I think you have already written this point. 4000 by 6000 is the hypers value 35, and then uh, hypers value 25, and then blend the layer to. And change the layer to uh, vivid layer, then convert the image 
then use this Gaussian blur tool and use the value 10 pixel. Use their mask to be black and just using a brush tool paint the area where you need to remove the blemishes. After this, you'll get here and then you'll be here. Use the dot, uh, you know, the clone tool to remove excess blemishes or the areas which you need to be perfect. So after getting this, you need to use dodge tool just to make your subjects eye and lips and other portions pop out where you want to use it and change the color tone and use the color tone according to your wish and make the image little sharper using uh, the uh, hyper tool again the value will be one for that and uh, after that again change it to vivid light and mask the layer and choose the circle, a uh, small circle layer and use the smaller value to be more sharp on your image. So this is how we uh, get good output uh, while we do the editing of a movie shot. Now I am going to uh, go to the final uh, image. <clears throat> For the finite image, uh, this is the before and after output. This is the before and after output. Uh, in finite photography editing, uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, since it is an art, uh, people can do anything from their artistic work. Uh, there is no limitation at all. Hey, Abhir. Yes. So we have some questions meanwhile. So our schedule is to take some questions related to the image which you edited or in general. Okay. And then we'll have some time for Sigma and then we will continue with uh, this fine art image. Is that fine with you? Hello. Yeah, is that fine with you? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. So we have some questions. Guys, you can raise your hand if you want to ask any question. Um, I will read out some of the questions which we already have. Mm -hmm. So, for one of the uh, first question uh, which I am taking, this Shantha Sorban uh, question is, I am a fashion photographer mm -hmm. and always fascinated by your style. Generally, how would you describe your style? I am an editorial based photographer. Like, you know, uh, I have a lot of clients where we work for different purposes. My style is basically editorial based photography. And in editorial based photography, I try to portray a story behind the image I shot. So I'll try to uh, uh, believe on storytelling process through my style. That is my style. 
second question we have from Raj Bansi. Being a fashion photographer, what has been most valuable to you in your learning? Now, what's the most valuable learning you had in fashion photography? See, we all keep learning throughout the process and keep the guide, keep the, keep the on the process of doing fashion photography, we will keep learning. There is no end. So I also keep learning from my previous experiences. But, you know, while I'm in fashion photography, the most challenging part is when I'm bringing out. Because in studio, when I'm doing the photo shoot, every light, everything is in my control. But while working in outdoor location, uh, there a lot of things are not in my control because weather is not in my control, sunlight is in not in my control. So there are a lot of things uh, which we need to understand when we do an outdoor photo shoot. So we have to keep things in mind. Like time is very important when we do a location based shoot. So this is a learning process. Like uh, I have done a lot of swimwear shoot. So normally what I do is for any swimwear shoot, I start the photo shoots at uh, six o'clock in the morning and I wrap it up by 10 o'clock in the uh, morning. So this is a very early hour shoot, which I conduct because I have seen the uh, light and everything is in quite good for photo shoots. So uh, this is the thing that I learned from fashion. Like, you know, not everything is your function, but when outdoor photo shoots, you really have to manage your time a lot. Time is everything. So, next question we have very basic question uh, from Teja that what is the difference between fine art photography and fashion photography? A fashion photography is more commercial side of photography. When you do fashion photography, probably you are working for a client to emphasize their merchandise. Now, you photographer, when you are a fashion photographer, you are not just an artist. You are also a part of the sales team because your photograph will sell the merchandise of the client. But when you do a fashion, uh, fine art photography, you are more like an artist. You put yourself in more, uh, you think yourself as a Picasso and do the photography because while you do the editing, the entire output will come more like a painting than a photography. So the more artistic side of photography is fine art photography, the more commercial side, the more uh, commercial way of uh, speaking in fashion genre is fashion photography. Vinod asks, which is your favorite lens while shooting? Uh, see, uh, this is a very good question. Thank you all for asking. Like, I like Portraits. I like you know. I'm a portrait photographer, so when I do uh, a lot of portraits in the studio, I mostly use 50 mm. I love that. We we have a voice question. This is from Soumya Kumar Mondol. So Soumya, you are unmuted. Please go ahead. See if we can hear you. Seems like a bad connection. We can try with Manik Sen. Uh, Manik, you are unmuted. Please go ahead. I guess both of them, they have some trouble. I will try the last one, which is Raghavendra. Mm -hmm. Raghavendra, please go ahead. If Ravindra, you need to be aware of the question. So, guys, when you are asking any question, please, if you are logged in on two devices, please go away from your main device. So, we have another question um, which came on our chat. This is from Lalit Chaudhary. What is the one thing you wish to know? Uh, no, no, I, I'm a little confused with this. So what is the one thing you wish you knew when you started photography? Like maybe, you know, like indirectly, like what would have been better 
if you knew or learned before you started the photography? Because uh, it could be like you know, when we start, we don't have any sense of doing that thing. So when I start photography, I really don't have sense of photography. So this is, I cannot tell you like what can be better. Like probably, you know, uh, when I start, there is no thing such as photography workshop, just like we do here today. So uh, when I'm doing photography in the starting phase, then probably if I can join some workshops at that point of time, it would have been a better and my learning process will be much smoother. But uh, unfortunately, at that point of time, there is no such workshop thing going on. So <laughs> maybe like you, know, you did not you did not have any formal training. Uh, no, I'm a self learner. I oh. go a lot of manuals. You know, I have some uh, teacher. You know, personal teacher like who uh, taught me a lot. Uh, for example, one photographer is there to base teacher at New York, and he is kind of my friend and can say elder brother. His name is Tito Nandi. You can always check. Profile Tito Nandi. Uh, when he uh, come in Kolkata, I have a lot of uh, you know, uh, what I call like you know, photography gyan from him, and that helps me a lot in improving myself in my photography. So he do uh, he does a lot of fashion photography and wildlife uh, in Europe and America. So, so, yeah. so this answer every other question. Um, we have another question, like, do you have any favorite work of which you have created? Any work which you think is your favorite or your best? Um, this is a very tricky question and this is very difficult for me to answer because I, uh, you know, I really try to do my best in each photo shoot. I really have to see, go through my previous work to choose like what can be my favorite. <laughs> this is a very tricky question for me because each and every work I have done so minutely. So I always like you know in my future photo shoot I also try to be better than my previous ones. So this is very tricky for me to answer. So the question from Vanita, she's asking, is this the only way you do the editing, or do you do do you use other tools like DAWs and Burn uh, and frequency separation? as well we use a lot of tools but through webinar i really cannot show you everything to early for each segment we have to do future work because in, for example uh, when i do a beauty shot properly it may take like six to seven hours to do a proper beauty shot but if I do edit six to seven hours, you people will be bored. So within this short period of time, I choose skin retouching section in beauty shop, which is actually very important section for any kind of edit. And I'm showing it to you guys. But, you know, there are a lot of other things like frequency separations, like many other things are there, which I can show you later on in different ways. Uh, <clears throat> I tend to, this is a question from Nag Jit. Uh, I tend to over edit sometime. How do I understand when to stop editing? Um, you have, like, you, know, you understood that you over edit sometimes. So, uh, when you do edit, let me tell you one thing like, do not do over editing. Anymore. Like, that won't make your image better. Uh, basically, it will take a lot of uh, natural uh, pixels, image value from your uh, image. So do not do over edit, just to make sure that you remove the blemishes from your subject. When you do fashion photography, remove the blemishes from your subject. And uh, color tone use as per your wish, uh, depending on the picture. Just do not do over edit. Like, you understood like you are over editing. So you know where to like you know, you stop it. So we have a question like when you go for a shoot, professional shoot or maybe paid assignment shoot, what is in your kitty bag? What are all the things you carry always? 
it depending upon the shoe like you know normally uh, i use two cameras one is 5d mark ii another one is uh, 750d crop flow okay so i use two cameras when we do any professional photo shoot for a client uh normally uh what i prefer to do is in the outdoor i use uh for choosing the lens i use uh 7200 7200 mm lens okay because this will help me a lot you know uh, for fashion photography you know i can really zoom in and out from different perspective for a portrait in the studio uh if i took uh, the beauty shots or hubbus shot i prefer to use uh, 50 mm or else you know 35 mm that is the one thing uh manik you can manik sen if you just speak up like probably we can hear you you have a question Hello, uh, are you able to hear me? Go ahead, Malak. Yeah, uh, Abhita, I have one question. Like uh, when uh, we are using the dodge tool over the eyes, especially. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what are the exposure value we need to set, like uh, approximately? See, it will always depending upon the image you choose. Like there is no value. Like you know, there is no. I mean, people a uh, lot of time. do a wrong thing choosing a fixed value don't do it because each and every picture is different the exposure value is different iso is different everything is different so you, you really need to understand what sort of value we should use for dots um just you know i would like to tell you one thing just do not do anything that is going to you know uh, make your image pixel white totally white because that will look very bad that will look over exposed while using the dots tool you know always try to use the mid tone like you just need to pop the uh, image portion like the eyes and lips okay so whenever you are using the dots tool uh, you use the dots tool on the lighter part of that particular section but do not rub it around I mean, use it just to make it pop out. Okay, and while you are doing it, you can always, since I am telling you again and again, always keep a layer higher copy so that you can see the previous layer and your edited layer simultaneously. So when you have using the dots tool, you can really understand whether it is overexposed or not. Okay, always try to you know pop out, not to rub it out. Okay, thank you. thank you. To the beginners, do you how do you suggest to take a career as a uh, fashion photography or primarily into the fine art photography? Fine art photography is uh, in India. Uh, I'll suggest mm -hmm. that if you want to make a lot of money, then you go for fashion photography. but you know if you can reach your level to europe and uh, extend your work career in fine art journal you have to look into it because europeans are very good in fine art um for india you mostly concentrate on fashion photography on more commercial side because there are a lot of uh, garment brand out there uh who Hire photographers regularly uh, to keep the clothing online on Flipkart.com or any online uh, uh, websites where people can purchase things. Now, uh, in their website also, they use a lot of photographs. So, for this, they need a photographer to, you know, portray their uh, dresses in the best possible way. So, if you focusing more on fashion will be very popular but you really need to understand to approach the people for that reason you need to uh, create your portfolio first because one people should really have the faith and courage and confidence to give you the job so to 
gain that confidence, you really need to create your own portfolio so that when you show the people like, okay, hey, man, this is the job I have done so far, the person uh, you know, representing the company uh, uh, become very much uh, you know, the, uh, confident to give you the job as a cash Um, guys, I'm getting a lot of questions, but some of them are not related to post processing. So request everyone to put your questions like taking some general questions, though, but uh, trying to be specific to post processing only. Uh, if you have any question on voice, please raise your hand on your panel and we'll unmute you and you can ask that question. So <clears throat> there is there is another question like do you use Lightroom for fashion editing? No, I do not use Lightroom. I only use for it. Uh, there's a, another question, Raja photographer Abir ji. I used to follow your work for a very long time. I am from Mumbai. And please let us know when you will have next work next workshop. Okay. <laughs> so, Uh, we all know the answers, like we all are waiting for this time to pass. We are not going to talk about Corona at all because you guys are already flowing up. You know, you are already having so much of information from different sources. So that is not a topic to discuss right now. And uh, there are a question about the same. So we will not touch that topic. Um, but yes. Uh, Abir, if you could give some suggestions on like when people are locked down, like some how to during this time, you know, with available resources, what kind of shoot they can do with your with their family, with the available light, because people won't have the studio lights with the available resources. What do you suggest them that what kind of photo shoot they can do their family, they can shoot their family um, at home. So any anything would you like to suggest and how? they can bring see, out good quality see you, you can uh, you know, take good pictures of your family members your mom dad kids friends uh, like sisters brother whoever is available and you have to use ambient light because uh, a lot of people doesn't have uh, the studio lighting set up in homes so just make sure that you use ambient light and for portrait photography, I'm sure you guys have 50 mm or 35 mm lens. So when choosing the lens, you uh, you know you do photo shoot with this kind of lens, which will create amazing portraits. And uh, while taking photo uh, photos, you can also try out uh, you know different things like uh, sunrise, and sunset. I'm sure a lot of people have rooftops. If you're on a roof, see so like how the cloud is there with suns, so you can take shots through. So a lot of things are there you can try it out. Like this is the time to use. Like I have taken this opportunity to spend time with my family. Normally we don't have that time because you have to roam around here and there. So this is the time I'm spending a lot of time with my uh, mom and dad. I guess you also do the same. I I have another question. Uh, this is that: Do you use any presets like accents or presets while doing the post processing? I have not used it, but I want to create some actions on my own because you can really create some actions. I'm working on it. So when I'll be confident and I'll be in a position to create my own action, I probably can share some good actions with the people of Cheese Workshop who are attendants. So there is a file which I can share and if you keep the file in your Photoshop folder, the action will be loaded in your screen and you can really apply that screen while you are doing it. So I'm going to create some good actions. I'm on process. I haven't done it fully yet. So when I will be done, I hope I will do this thing soon and I can share some of my own actions. 
so we have a follow up question like from prigya mishra uh, that why you don't use lightroom i don't like it <laughs> i like photoshop uh, okay means you never tried it or you tried and you did not like it i tried it but i feel bored okay so, yeah i use photoshop because everything is in my control when i'm doing editing i have to have each and every pixel in my control in photoshop i do that and each and every pixel is in my control but in lightroom i didn't find that flexible but that is an idea oh great so um, we have uh, like thanks for this uh, session we have some open question we were unable to take it uh, right now because either they are not relevant to post processing <coughs> or too specific feel free to ping abhishek uh, 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 to Abhi Roy on his Instagram, or you can contact Chief's team, and we will have those answered. Now we, as per our schedule, now it's time for uh, Sigma team to give a presentation for a few minutes. So I'm connecting uh, right now to Sombit Das. Sombit will be walking you through about the some product. and then we will resume our fine art uh, our fine art uh, post processing which will be followed by question answers the same way we did it uh, somvit you can unmute your phone uh, unmute your voice and share your screen and photo and uh, please carry on you are a presenter now Sombit made you a presenter. If you can hear, you can just go ahead and play your stuff. uh seems like there is some difficulty uh from uh some technical difficulty we will continue with abir as of now and then we will uh, resume this presentation abir can you hear us hello yeah abir can you hear yeah. yeah i can hear can you hear me yeah yeah so please share your screen and video and uh, we will carry on right now with you you are a presenter right now yeah we can see your screen please continue <coughs> so i'm going to edit the final image now 
So I cannot I hear you. Cannot hear you, Abir, properly. So can you hear me? It is better. Thank you. Okay. So when we are going to do any finite edit, we need to understand that finite photography is purely art. Okay. And art has no limitation. Okay. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to do this or that. You can do your final edit as you want. Uh, you have an artistic mind. You think what is better for your image and you do that. Since uh, I'm an individual, I have my own preferences. I have some preferences about like uh, Renaissance art and painting. So in my cases, while I'm going to be do any finer photo shoot, my tendency will be like that. For, I mean, if you go check out my finer uh, portraits, you will have that feeling like any Renaissance pictures, Renaissance photographs. So, my tendency is uh, just like that. So, uh, let me open this finer image. Uh, as you can see, that you know, I have. Uh, edited this image in different way, like it looks more like a painting, but probably I can use this after uh, thing uh, as an example, or else I can also create something different, different effect. So that you know, th this is another effect, but let me try out something different with the same picture. So you can get like you know, the different. Uh, Know, the different output of the same picture, same raw image. So, when I'm going to do a finite edit, my tendency is like not to do too much of editing and more focusing on the uh, uh, color tone and changing uh, and uh, make the image more look very sharp or things like that. So, let me start the process. So again, uh, layer by copy, and uh, I'm going to use a little faster here because you already know the steps. So, high cross, and inversion the image, changing the blending uh, mode, and uh, mask to. Now I'm going to uh, use the paint tool and brush on the uh, section of the skin where I need to remove the pencils as I've done it before with the beauty shot in it.
I'm going to launch the beer and I'm going to begin to see the entire party. Now, in my previous image, I have used this kind of tone. Some people may like that tone, some people may not like that tone. But here, I'm going to use a different uh, way of doing it. So, In uh, a lot of Renaissance picture, if you check out a Renaissance picture, you will see different shades of red while uh, they paint on uh, canvas. So I'm going to use that type of red. This is not the type of red we use. Another type of red where the red is not so much loud. Uh, it is more subtle and a little uh, desaturated, undersaturated. So, when I'm really focusing on a particular uh, tone of color, I'll be using this tone. Select color. Then I can use, I can choose different color and play around with the shades. Here, what I'm doing is no hard and fast rule. Since you're an artist, you have a full liberty to play around with the picture. So I'm doing it just like that. Okay. You are artist yourself. So when you do your finite image editing, just play around with your creativity methods. But you need to think about the skin texturing and all this. this Skin texture of the beautiful ones. So don't uh, do any skin texture, just remove the blemishes. Here I'm going to use channel and this will help us to uh, make the image like uh, I need to uh, blend this uh, darker sections with colors. So I'm going to use this uh, channel and mix it too for that reason. Like go different shapes like red, green, and blue. So using these uh, sections. Change the color tone of the darker section. So make it more uh, on the red side, maybe I'm going to change the darker section. And then I'm going to do the layer fire copy. Now I need to sharpen the match.
You really need to check the image again and again, just to make sure that everything is fine. As I say that I do not edit too much in Final TV, so I kind of try to gain the output that I want. Uh, I like it to uh, do it. Just to uh, make sure that my brightness and contrast are in proper. So that we can This is the output and again we send it to see the map. So this is basically three version, three different type of, two different type of edits from one. Uh, this is the original file. This is one type. This is another type. Some people may like the original color tone, which always, like I said, like since it's fine, I think always depending upon the person who sees the picture from a different angle. Since it is odd, so everyone has the liberty to uh, go for the viewpoint. Some people may like the original tone of this color, some people may like this monochromatic tone of this color, some people may like this tone of this color. So I have different options to present here. So you can see the different uh, color tone changing as the same image. So, this is the same. so if anyone has any questions of final, you can ask me. Mukesh, you can you hear me? Hello. 
this I'm here. Yeah. So I have done the finite uh, image edit, and I have two different shades of edit from one uh, similar file. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has uh, uh, any questions on finite, they can uh, raise their point and sure. try to give the best answer. Sure. Well. sure. Thanks. Thanks, Abir. So let's. I have a couple of questions. Uh, but not many related to editing. So I would appreciate guys put all the text in one question. If you put it in two parts or if you ask in two parts, we cannot keep a track because in between some other question, if it is coming, raise your hand if you want to ask any voice uh, question. And since we don't have much questions, there are many questions, but not related to this image or the previous image or the processing. So please put your question. Meanwhile, what we will do it, we will uh, have a session with Mr. Suresh. I'm connecting uh, Suresh. Uh, Suresh, can you hear us? Uh, Suresh? Yeah. Can, yeah. can you be able to? Yes, yes, Suresh, we can hear you. So, guys, we have Suresh from Sigma. We have uh, Suresh from Sigma, Sigma, and we can hear you loud, loud and clear. So, okay, okay. we have a couple of slides to play. Uh, Suresh, please go ahead. I will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you please, you please run the slide. So, when I say next, you can move to the next slide. Sir, okay. Sure. Like what we did yesterday. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead, please, Suresh. The slide is open. It is visible, uh, I guess, just a minute. And momentarily, it will be visible to everyone. Yes. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thanks for giving this opportunity. Good evening to everyone. So today, we are going to talk about uh, Sigma Lens which is unique 18 to 35 mm 1.5 1.8 open uh, this is an APS-C format lens which comes under the category of art series uh, most of them must not be aware why they call art contemporary and sports what is this why the division is there see sigma has ch changed into sigma global vision and they are categorizing all the new production of lenses into three categories one is called art another one is contemporary and the third is sports so art is nothing but it gives an artistic effect like the people who take wedding portrait portraiture candid so this categories comes under the art the contemporary what is the use of a contemporary lens see sometimes we feel a we carrying a telephoto lens so if you want something to be compact but you want the range to be more so you can choose a contemporary lens and some people love photography and they travel a lot so they want to uh, 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 fight with the different temperatures with the different climate conditions for that my choice will be a sports series okay so now we will see uh, what is 1835 and what are these applications and uh, what is the special on the optics we can move to the next one sir Yeah. As I told, Sigma Global Visions, they are categorized into three. We can move to the next. This is the thing what I explained. Contemporary, art, and sports series. Con again, contemporary is nothing but it's a short zoom lens. Art gives an artistic effect, which comes under the category of candid, portraitures. Sports comes under the rugged things. that It's completely a line-up with a metal case and each lens has a rubber seal on it so it exactly for a traveler next slide sir this is the lens which we are going to talk about as i told you earlier it's an APS-C lens it's not a full frame it's an APS-C and uh, yesterday some people are asking what lens can i use for a uh, uh, video shoot 
i'm a show, i'm a filmmaker uh, what lens can be preferred for it i can say you always try to use this 1835 which covers you three different focal lengths in one lens that is 18 mm 24 mm and 35 mm with the standard opening 1.8 next slide sir yeah this is the lens construction you can see how the lenses has been placed you can see two dots sld and aspherical the so sld is special low dispersion glass which is thin which can allow more light to enter into the sensor so we, when the light is available if we get the image quality very well so photography is nothing you know uh, it's a combination of light okay so whatever light input it's available with 1.8 we can shoot a, a excellent portraiture with this lens with a background bokeh <laughs> this is the mtf chart which normally they use for all the lens to see how the lens performance is how the inside optical performance is next one sir the elaboration of this it's on the next slide we can move to the next yeah you see the mtf chart gives all these outputs like destruction what is the destruction normally when you take a wide angle lens close to the subject you can see the face going in a different shape we call that as a destructions so this basically happens with a wide angle lens when you're going closer to the subject so in this 1835 when you are operating with an 18 mm you can see very minimal destruction and 35 mm you can see a flat next slide sir vignetting most of the people what they use they normally use the aps into the full frame what happens the four corners will be black out that we called as vignetting even when we use a crop sensor lens with a crop body or a full frame lens with a full frame body sometimes we may see the corners black areas because of the poor quality of the optics so the main thing the optic should be good inside the lens the optic if it, it is not like 1.8 gives more brighter output more bokeh more sharper results see the you can have a 50 mm 1.5 1.8 for a 10000 rupees the same 50 mm 1.8 you will have in a different pricing so what is the difference the optics inside optics the build quality that makes the difference we must not think the 50 mm 10.8 on a 50 mm 1.8 for 10000 and the 50 mm 1.8 for 30000 gives the same output it won't give because the lens construction inside how many sld glasses are used that means how many super low dispersion glasses are used only when there is a thin element the amount of light entry will be more okay so this lens you can see it is very minimal vignetting you can see the lines okay next slide sir flare and the ghost normally when you going for an outdoor wedding candid so when you want to take an against light you can see the flares but this it has been coated in a way it minimizes the flare and ghosting see the word minimize we can't able to make it zero we can't make the flare and ghost zero but we have done our effect to reduce it to the minimum level so our optics can give a excellent output against the light next slide sir hypersonic motor uh in a lot of lenses we can see usm hsm so hypersonic motor ultrasonic motor it depends on the focus it's an algorithm how fast the af is functioning so we use hypersonic motor which gives a smooth af next one sir nine blade round diaphragm on the picture itself you can be very clear on the left hand side you can see hexagon shape so how many blades are there it's eight blades on the right hand side you can see the ring clearly because of nine so when we increase the number of blades you can see a good round shape but when there is up to eight or six 
you will get this type of pictures it won't be a ring it won't, it won't give a ring shape next slide sir usb dock see what is the use of usb dock normally uh, now a lot of complaints raising that i am getting a deviation focus deviation that means my focus is not on the subject it's moving in the front or my focus is when i am pointing out an human eye my focus is not falling on the eye it may be on the nose it may be on the ear what is the problem see normally when the camera manufacturers make in camera the sensor sometimes may be placed minus 1 or minus plus 1 the position of the sensor may be placed 0.01 backward or minus 0.1 front so this creates the focus deviation on the lens so with the usb dock you can shift the focus see normally in dslrs from 5d mark 2 you can see on the camera we have micro focus adjustment what is the use of micro focus adjustment so when you gets when you buy a new lens when you are using it if you find difficulty in getting the exact area of focus so you can slightly adjust to some extreme that is in the cameras they have given up to plus 2 and minus 2 but this with this usb dock you can go up to plus 10 minus 10 so you can bring the focus to the exact point where you are aiming the subject so it can be adjusted using this sigma usb dock so what or uh, actually sigma is helping out to get focus with your body so when you are giving for a calibration when you are bringing sigma lenses for calibration to the service point try to bring with your camera so that we can align the lens we can calibrate a lens to your body because body to body the variation will be there why we can able to find this variation nowadays the reason the pixels has increased and we are using full frame camera and we are enlarging it and we are using a wide open lenses like 1.2 1.8 and 1.4 where the shallow depth of field falls exactly where we are focusing it that's the reason nowadays we can easily identify the focus deviation so my personal advice if you feel any focus difference on sigma lenses it's not the fault with the sigma lenses so it has to be calibrated to your body so bring your body as well as the lens we can able to calibrate it okay move to the next slide sir so this is the mtf measuring chart through which each and every lens coming out of sigma factory check with 46 megapixel sovian sensor to test the quality the flare the vignetting everything is tested before it coming to the sales yeah. next slide sir so what sorry can you go to the last one please last slide please yeah next to this next to this so you can see this 1835 comes under the category of wide standard and a portraiture lens so this can be a single solution so it can be worked as a three different focal length 18 24 35 3 three lenses combined together one with 1.8 standard and thank you so much for giving this opportunity for presenting the sigma 1835 to you all now if you have any questions please let me know thank you very much i i guess this is the first time i have seen any lens with a usb which can connect to some system i guess uh, does it is it there or uh, with any other brand also or is it only uh, 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 sigma as complete uh, usb uh, sigma usb dock can be used for the complete lineup sir like what i told art series contemporary and sports for all the categories you can use but uh, in tamron there is a limitation the usb dock can be operated only for a one lens 15600 not for others only these two brands has the usb dock no oh, okay 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 uh thank so, you if yeah, you have you can go to the questions uh feel free to uh, put it on the screen or raise your hand 
anything related to sigma i think there are a lot of questions on the uh, session uh, uh, somebody has asked 1835 lens as a image stabilization no the 1835 lens has no image stabilization see it's a compact one normally for a compact lens with wide open like 1.8 you no need any stabilization you can try it out you feel more comfortable with an is okay um guys i'll be uh, handing over back to abir okay so then i will answer uh, answer them yeah. first so okay. as and when we get some questions we will be oh, uh, there are a lot of questions i, I will answer them no no worries you can continue the session please sure sure so you can answer that yeah, i will answer them i will answer them and if anything comes on our oh, you, can, you can communicate with yeah. we will guys please ask any question you have raise your hand and uh, uh, abir i'm i'm handing over uh, the screen to abir abir will be taking it forward forward answering questions related to the post processing which we had so very first question which we have here is uh abir the how do you get the idea and the inspiration for fine art portrait and can you train ourselves to get such creative ideas this is nagajyoti and uh abir yes please. can you hear me so how do you get inspiration and how do you get idea or how do you conceptualize your creative shoots for uh, fine art see i am an art lover i always do the painting of renaissance era okay so when i have my personal fine art shoot when i try to explore this kind of idea but, but you know if i uh, go for different techniques of fine art there are a lot of things like you know, low key high key and a lot of different things where i also explore but if you say like how i get inspiration of doing this fine art photography i would say that you know my inspirations are renaissance paintings okay because i love those paintings like from renaissance era those are beautiful and uh, being a photographer i cannot paint those things because i am not too much patience have patience to uh, paint those things but i can uh, really uh, like drawing and all those things but being a photographer if i can somehow portray the similar kind of painting style effect through my photography that is my vision and that is my mission so those fine art uh, inspirations is really coming from me from those venus paintings okay uh, thank you um the next question i have for suresh i am a portrait photographer i am having 5d canon 5d mark 4 which lens do you suggest contemporary or art series and why no i suggest uh, to, i suggest to go for with art series because see your body as a eye value pixels and which can reproduce eye image quality for that i always recommend to go with art series in which they use special optics not like contemporary art if you want to feel like an art better to choose a art series lens because you have a lot of super low dispersion glass and fld glass in in built in it um next question is for abir how to match mood and color of the of an image so it is totally dependent upon the theme of the picture as you do like you know, uh, mood and color it is totally depending very person to person how you perceive how you see things how you uh, want the output to be done in a perfect way so it will always depend it is very there is no hard and fast rule like your color tone should be uh, you know Cool or color tone should be this particular tone. No, nothing like that. It always depends. Like you are an individual, you have your own artistic sense. So while editing any fine art image, uh, you can go and play around with your color toning and do anything you want. But when you do commercial fashion photography, 
I suggest not to overdo with color tone because the client who is giving the job for uh, you know presenting her merchandise through your photography, his main intention is to market those clothing lines. So you do not want to change the color of the cloth of that particular brand. So when you do commercial photography, just keep the color tone as natural as you can. But for any finer photography, you can play around like anything. Uh, there is no limit. You can do anything. And one more question I have. Do you use mouse or you use some Wacom or any other similar system? I uh, use mostly mouse, but you know, for uh, Beauty shots edit, uh, graphic paint is very uh, useful tool, but uh, when I work in home, I mostly use mouse. Okay, uh, thank you. Does 1835, the question is for Suresh, 1835 lens has image stabilizer? Yeah, this is the first thing I answered about. Sorry, uh, 1835 lens, uh, there is no image stabilization on it. The reason why there is no image stabilization because it's very compact and with the wide open like 1.8 uh, so you can try out even without a tripod so you won't feel any shake on the images you can get very confident okay thank you thank you sir. guys if you have any question about the today's session and which can because this recording will be available on our youtube channel it will be live in next couple of hours. So no worries. You can watch that particular step uh, there. So you don't have to ask those questions here. Uh, my next question is, what is the price for 1835? What is the price of? 1835. 1835. 1835 our price is uh, 70,000 rupees but better you can check with your local dealers uh, they can work out a very good deal for you because we are the direct distributor so normally we won't sell directly to the end users so dealers will give a very good deal for you sir, for sure okay um, I have a question for Abir how you turn the model in black and white and keep the red clothes on the model red i think this question is about selective coloring yes yeah so but if you want to uh, change the entire thing black and uh, keep the particular uh, portion colored so you have to do uh, use the mask layer like i have shown you the layer via copy when you do the masking uh, let me show you instead of speaking uh, for example can you show my screen? Yeah, it is visible right now. Okay, so let me open this thing. When we do edit, I'm going to edit this image just to show that part. Okay, um, layer for copy, and uh, I choose uh, black and white option. Uh, turn it as uh, black and white. And uh, I'm going to use this mask. And I'm going to brush the section which I want in color. Uh, so if I want red, I'm going to use the brush tool. And slowly, I will do something like this. It will take a long time to do it perfectly. Uh, I'm trying to do it quickly. So it might not be too much perfect, but you can understand how things are really done. So this is how uh, things will be. The, there are a lot of things here which I have to do it very perfectly to get in a proper way. So this is how you layer by copy, one in black and white, one in color, use the layer mask, keep everything as it is, just uh, rub the brush on the section which you need to color. That's it. 
anyone have any voice question please raise your hand um, one of the questions is that a strange question he the strange problem this person is facing uh, that when i edit my photos on computer they are all fine but when i take those pictures on my phone then the quality goes bad i mean uh, when the upload in social media then the quality is gone i guess that would be the uh, right yeah that's obvious because you know uh, for example if you want to upload it in instagram or facebook the quality will be dropped because their program written in such a way it will uh, squeeze the image it will squeeze the image in, uh, that means it will basically uh, decrease the value pixel value it will you know uh, reduce the canvas size for that reason it happens i mean okay. it's it's uh, uh, there is nothing we can do about it because if you are on facebook or instagram you have to go along with the privacy policy of the setting of that particular social media uh, we have many questions left but we don't have much time um, how to buy sigma lenses so we'll share the contact details with you you can uh, will we have your email and phone yes, number i have given the answer for him uh, in uh, shitalacamera.com website or sigmaindia.in website they can find the complete list of dealer network throughout india throughout india dealers we have listed over there with the phone numbers okay nice thank you so one more question probably this may be the last question until we have someone raise uh, their hand for a question uh, this question is like, do you use tethering cable for a live view while shooting in a studio? Sometimes, you... sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, uh, each and every uh, studio doesn't have the capacity to uh, do it. Some studio has, then I use it. Some studio don't, then I do not do it. Okay. And... Uh... Another question which is not related to editing, but this question is very commonly asked, which is that how to approach clients for some paid work? Okay, uh, for this is a way, this is not related to marketing. This is uh, for a business question, but still I want to ask, uh, answer these questions, like how I do it. Okay. So when I have uh, different boutiques opening in Kolkata, you know, I have that connection. So I have the people, I research on internet and I get the news that this boutique is opening in Kolkata, new boutiques or existing boutique who is looking for a photographer for launching their brand. So I have a preset email which I write uh, to the particular client and uh, first step is email, second step uh, is uh, phone, and third step is visiting the client face to face. And that's how I track the deal. Okay. Uh, we have another common question, we, which is about color calibration. The question is that uh, it is from Dito, like when I change the device, the color theme, the color scheme completely changes so this question is about color calibration uh abir for you like it is totally depending upon the device i would like to ask the person who is, uh, has these questions like what device he uses uh so typically what happens if you are editing on one screen for an example on your laptop and you move to another computer uh the colors start popping up in a different way it, and I guess a lot of screens are not uh, calibrated. Right. That's why we always suggested to use Macintosh instead of Windows because Mac has a proper color calibration which doesn't have any other computers. So, uh, for editing, use Macintosh, but I know it's very costly. So uh, try to use it. Um, uh, if you use other tools, uh, um, there is nothing we can do about it because, like, the, it is totally depending upon the hardware. Okay, so if you have proper color calibration, but uh, when user is viewing your photographs, they might not have it. So it is totally 
depending upon the person who is using the gadget. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I guess uh, we are uh, done with most of the questions related to post-processing. And it's 6.11 right now. Uh, still, it's a last opportunity, guys. If you have any question for Abir or for Suresh, you can type it or you can uh, just ask it on your screen. Um, just, you know, for a closing, just uh, Suresh, uh, any feedback, anything you want to say before we say goodbye? Uh, seems like Suresh is not audible. Abir? Yes. Sorry, I am there. I am there. I muted my. Oh, okay, okay. Suresh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Suresh, uh, yep. you can continue. Like, you want to say anything before we say goodbye? No, the last thing what we, everybody want to say is stay home, stay safe. <laughs> because that's the thing which is going on. And it was a night session. Uh, I really thank uh, uh, Mr. Abiroy for his very good presentation. Because thank even you. I am very new to this. <laughs> because I am into the sales line. But this editing class was very interesting for me as well. So, uh, thanks a lot, sir. It was a great day for us. Go for all the attendees as well. It was very interesting today. Uh, thank you, thank you, Suresh, for your time and participating. Without you, it would have not been possible. And thank you, Mukesha, for giving this opportunity for Sigma. Uh, Abir, closing. Yeah I, yeah, I just want to say uh, one thing: stay safe, stay home. And uh, one more thing: like I have got a huge people asking me about the. Uh, Pune workshop, Mumbai workshop, what will be the next date and all those things. Uh, since we uh, cannot take the decision right now, I'm sure things will be normal just like before very soon. So we will change the date. Uh, the workshop will be uh, have happened. Uh, not, not to worry about it. But we have to change the date and we will be coming to that. I'm sure these people will let you know the date as soon as possible. Yeah, I'm sure like things will get better. Right now, the most important is uh, stay home, stay safe. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Thank you very much. Thank you all Bye. for joining Bye. this way. Thank you, guys. So you will get your certificate sent out to you. You will get... Uh, uh, the details like Instagram handle of Abir. Uh, it's one Abir Roy, correct? Yes, one Abir Roy. So number one Abir Roy, you can follow him. Um, you can look at the cheese handles. Every all the handles are cheese dot com, c h i i z d o t c o m. Uh, tomorrow we have a different session altogether. We will be having a birding session tomorrow. So stay tuned. We will share more details uh, for tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.